Welcome back to the 8th Concession. My name is Natalie and today I'm not going to be outside in my gardens or working on any projects out there. Today I have a project I need to do in the kitchen. So let's talk a little bit about kitchens. As I mentioned, this house that we bought three years ago, um, our plans are to renovate it both inside and out. But we haven't actually done any of the renovations inside yet. We did do um, a section downstairs for our daughter. Our special needs daughter will be living with us always. And out of respect for her, we're not going to show that. But we have been working hard on that. That is now finished. So now I would love for us to start on the renovations to the part of the house that we live in but we have to do it in a certain order and unfortunately the kitchen <laughs> is not at the top of the list. I wish it was because the fact is this is not my dream kitchen. The house we lived in in the city before this I had a big beautiful bright kitchen. This one is not that. Now I'm sure the previous owners loved it. I'm sure they cooked great meals here but this kitchen was built um, in the 70s the house was built in the 70s. The kitchen, I don't think, has been updated since then. So I find it small. I find it dark. I find it cramped. In fact, the only space I have for doing any sort of prep work is this tiny corner of the uh, counter. You can see that side is usually got eggs that I need to clean and process. And sometimes there might be dishes here piling up because we don't have a dishwasher. So there's not a lot of room and quite often I have to do a lot of the prep on the kitchen table which is not ideal but I have great plans for this kitchen and when it does come time to renovate it it's going to look very different so I guess you can say you're getting a look at the before picture of the kitchen but in the meantime I still have to cook and prepare food and Maybe the kitchen you're in is not your dream kitchen either. Maybe you've had to recently move and haven't had a chance to update it the way you want, you know. Um, the pandemic has hit a lot of people hard. Maybe you've had to change houses, change cities for jobs. So I might not be the only one who is cooking in not their dream kitchen. But can you still make delicious food? Of course you can. So today what I need to do is to use up some of the beautiful fresh strawberries that I picked just a few days ago at a farm just one concession over from us which is why I don't grow them in my own garden <laughs> I just go and pick them there and I want to make a favorite recipe of mine it was something my mother always made she was German and it is a German fresh strawberry torta so I make it from scratch including what they call the torten Boden the base of the cake and that's what I thought maybe you'd like to join me in making today so why don't we get started? So the first thing I have to do is prepare the cake pans. Now you can see that I have very specific pans here. These are torta pans. Some people call them flan pans, but um, they are German. And you can see that they have a nice fluted edge. But more importantly, they have a raised section. So that when you flip them over, you have this nice this nice secure area where you can put in the fruit and it won't fall off. So it is unlike a tart pan where the bottom is flat. This one has this little groove in it here, which makes it great for making tortas and horrible for washing afterwards. I have two different sizes only because those are the ones I have. You can buy these online or in any sort of um, European kitchen shop or food store they often have them but they are on Amazon I did see them so they are my torta pans they are well used you can see <laughs> they're not brand new but they work perfectly fine now the recipe I'm using um, is not the same recipe some other people might use um, you can buy tortas in the store sometimes but they are very much like a sponge cake my mother always made hers as uh, just a white cake so it's a little denser but that's the way we like it and she found the recipe in an old cookbook and it is just simply a two egg it's called two egg vanilla cake the recipe makes enough for two pans so if I'm only making one cake they freeze beautifully and I'll just freeze the finished cake and whenever I need it I take it out thought and put some fresh fruit on it my mother always 
prepared her pans by uh, first buttering them and then putting flour on them. Now I don't tend to use butter in our house because um, many of us, including myself, are lactose intolerant. So even though I believe butter is better for you, um, you'll find I use a lot of margarine in this house for that reason. It just uh, causes problems with a bunch of us. So I am going to grease and flour my pans. I start with the crease because that's the hardest one to get. And you really do want this cake to come out of the pan easily. So, around I go. When I was younger, we didn't have these silicone brushes. I just used a bit of um, plastic wrap wrapped around my fingers to do this. Try to make sure that it is all greased so you get the nicest looking edges when you take the cake out. The other difference between tortas and tarts are that tarts usually have a pie crust shell and this is a cake. Now if you want this two egg cake recipe, I will uh, put it below. Some of my favorite recipes are the ones that come from previous generations. I have uh, a recipe box full of older recipes like this one. I just think sometimes that they taste better. Okay, we're all buttered. And now a bit of flour. I do it over the other pan so that if any falls. Now first I do the flat part. And you can see if there are any spots you've missed. You can go over them. and then I do the edges, letting the excess fall into the other cake pan. Sometimes I'll go in the other direction just to make sure both sides of the fluted edges are covered. And there is one cake pan ready to go. Here we go, doing the flat part first before all the flour falls into that crevice. This time I'll do it over the sinks to catch any of the flour falling, so I'm just going to move over here. And there we go. I've decided to do the actual cake batter here on this little bit of counter simply because the table is so low. So I'll move these over here and then I also preheat my oven. Check my recipe here and my very old recipe box 350. All right let's preheat that oven. So now we're ready to prepare our batter, our two egg cake. So the first step, because this is an older recipe, it's one of those recipes where you have the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients and you uh, mix them bit by bit. So first I have to put my dry ingredients in this bowl, which was a one and three quarters or a little bit more cups of flour, 
one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. We'll do that. One, three, and half a teaspoon salt. go. I'm just going to use this mixing spoon to mix it really well. And then that gets set aside. That's ready to go. Now in this bowl that I'm going to mix in, I have to cream the margarine and add the sugar one bit at a time. So it is half a cup of butter, or margarine in my case. Got that ready. So half a cup of margarine. And then it is a full cup of sugar. And it's just my oven preheating to 350. says to add it in a bit at a time but I kind of dump most of it in all at once. Um, you'll notice I don't have the fancy stand mixer. I have a handy hand mixer that is getting quite old but my mother used to do it with just a spatula and beat it. Man that, that takes a lot of work. So I am just going to turn on this mixer and mix this in. cream it till it's nice and fluffy, which it is. And then we are going to add the two eggs and again beat it until it's nice and fluffy. Now eggs we have thanks to our lovely hens. nice and silky smooth. I have to just clean off those edges. And this is how you can tell it's an old recipe. You have to add the flour and three quarters of a cup of milk with a teaspoon of vanilla alternately starting and ending with the flour. So this is where this comes in handy. I usually do it in thirds. So I'll do this. I like to use the spatula first so if I put the mixer in the flour doesn't go flying everywhere. and then flour, milk, and flour again.
And there you have it. Silky smooth, beautiful. Whoop, make it a mess. Two egg vanilla cake. So now we put them in the pans. There is a little trick to this. Because this batter, um, there's not like a ton of batter. You don't want a torta to be this thick. You want it to just be this thick. But in order to make it work so you don't have to move things around too much, I always start by putting the batter in the, uh, the crevice there. And then at the end, I spread it smooth over the top. So that's what we're going to do. Hopefully that stopped dripping. So first, go around the edge. And then some in the middle. always look like it's going to cover them, but it does. I take my knife and I make sure that the batter is level all the way around. You don't need much batter on the top. So I just work to make it just nice and even. There we go. Now this one starting with making sure it's in that crevice and then just gently pulling it over the middle. As my cake bat my cake pans are different sizes, I can't even just split the batter in half because this one's smaller than that one. But there you go. And now they're ready to go in the 350 degree oven for what does my recipe say? 25 to 30 minutes. So let's do that. So it's been about 25 minutes. I think the cakes should be done. Let's have a look. Nice golden brown. Spring back when you touch and a little bit of brown right on the edge. I think they look great. So we'll just let them cool on the racks for about 10 minutes and then we'll take them out. So our cakes have cooled. Now it's time to take them out of the pans. This can be a little bit tricky because of the way they're made, but I have found that just a little butter knife and a little bit of patience is the best way. So what I do is I put the knife in here in one of the flutes and I just gently lift the cake. I can feel that edge lifting up as I go around. That just helps loosen it from the pan. always tell when you get back to where you started because the cake is nice and loose. Sometimes, even after I turn it, 
have to give it a little help. Along that top edge. Now it could be because my pans are old. There we go. A little bit of uh, damage there, but all in all, a lovely cake. So let's do the other one. That's what you want to see. Nice and golden brown, lovely edge, pretty fluting. So let's finish one of our cakes. I think I'm going to put the big one in the freezer for the next time um, my kids and their families come over and we're going to make fresh strawberry torta with this one. So I've put the torta on just a nice little plate. And now we're going to add some of the washed and hulled strawberries that I picked the other day. Aren't they gorgeous? I typically cut them in half so they lay flat on the cake. Now you can put custard underneath your fruit. Some people love that. I've just never been a fan, but that's very typical. So you could put a nice layer of vanilla custard down. I just actually put the fruit in. So we're going to cut our washed and hulled fruit and you can make pretty patterns with these if you like depending on what you have. When I used to make this for my parents anniversary I would use a whole variety of fruit to make it really colorful because you can use anything. So I use strawberry, blueberry, kiwi, um, peach, mandarin oranges, um, and it just looks so colorful and beautiful. But really, in early summer, there's not much that can beat fresh local strawberries. Now you do want to cover as much of the cake as you can. So sometimes you'll see, I'll cut as, as we get closer to the middle, I'll cut them in different shapes so they fit. For instance, right there, that big one doesn't fit. I think you'd need about a quart of strawberries, maybe a little less. Maybe a pint. This here in the bowl is about a quart of strawberries, but I won't use all of them. You don't need that many. Especially when you're cutting them in half. Oh, the smell of these fresh strawberries. So now because I still have some white cake showing, I'll start cutting them in quarters lengthwise so that I can just kind of tuck them in and every bite will have strawberry. You don't want any sticking up too much otherwise your glaze won't cover them. But tuck them down in between the bigger pieces.
There we go, nicely covered with our berries. So now it's time to make our glaze. I tend to use a German glaze by Dr. Utka. That's very easy to get here in Southern Ontario in many of the grocery stores. I have seen other packages from other companies that just say red glaze. So you can use anything like that. I would not advise using Jell-O. Um, it tends to be a lot sweeter. But these are very easy to mix up. So let's go ahead and finish our cake. All we need for our glaze is a small pot, a bit of water or fruit juice. Now, of course, because these strawberries are fresh, I don't have any juice, but if you use the canned fruit, you can use the juice that you strain off. Um, they do recommend you thin it if you use the, fr the juice straight. It might make your, your glaze too thick and then it'll be difficult to spread. So, first thing we do is we put our powder in our little pot. And to that we add two tablespoons of sugar. Mix it together. I made a mess there. And then add your liquid and stir it till there are no lumps. Now these glazes come in two varieties, usually red or clear. So depending on what fruit I'm using, I'm using obviously blueberries or raspberries, strawberries, oh sour cherries are good, then I use the red gel. Turn it on medium heat, following the directions on the package, of course. If I'm using mandarin oranges, or a mixture of fruits, or peaches, gooseberries, um, then I would use clear. But if you run out, and you're having a strawberry torta, and you only have clear, no problem, use the clear. The glaze doesn't usually have any flavor unless you add fruit juice instead of water. So we're going to put this on medium high and let it come to a boil. starts to come to a boil, it uh, becomes translucent. It's important to keep stirring while you do this though, so it doesn't burn in one spot. So it's boiling and the package says to keep stirring and boiling for one minute. Take it off the heat and you're going to let it cool for one minute before putting it on the cake. Now you don't want to wait any longer than one minute for it to cool or it'll start setting right in the pot. And when you do your torta, you should start in the center and work your way outwards. So just a nice thin layer trying to cover all of the fruit. When it's still nice and warm like this, it spreads out on its own. When it starts to cool, then you get clumps. Um, this is where the nice raised edge on your torta will come in handy to keep your glaze in check. Sorry. 
already started to get thick in my pot here. I have to quickly finish. Trying to cover all the fruit. And there we have it. Now we'll let it cool for about an hour in the fridge so the glaze sets firm and then enjoy it with some whipped cream. And here we are, the perfect taste of early summer. Mmm, nothing beats the taste of a fresh strawberry torta. Well, I hope it's inspired you to make your own fruit torta, whether it's strawberries or some other fruit, and enjoy a taste of summer. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.